Dr. Bishop, have you ever seen anything like this? Similar to a tiny parasite found in livestock. Boy, I've never seen one this size or in humans. Seven pounds and ten ounces. Walter, this is our largest worm yet. Parasitic worm, to be precise. Truly, Agent Farnsworth, it never ceases to amaze me the infinite variation that Mother Nature gives us. She truly has quite a disturbing sense of humor. Considering your new pet, I think Mother Nature's a real bitch. How's it going in here? You mean here at Bishop's Live Bait? Actually, I think these things that scare off the fish, don't you? Walter, we spoke to the woman we found on the beach, and she said that everyone on that boat took some sort of capsule medicine. Actually, Maylin's the only one who didn't take the capsule, and she's the only one who didn't get infected. So, do you think it's possible that that could have been inside the capsule? Oh. Of course, that makes perfect sense. If the time of gestation is equal to the time of transport, well, it would explain why the creatures need the host. These bodies provide nutrition, warmth, and protective shelter. They enable the parasite to grow. Are you saying that these people were used as some sort of human incubator? Quite ingenious, really. And yes, to your question, it is possible for the larvae of the parasite to fit into a capsule. It would allow the parasite to grow on the journey here. If only all parasitic worms were full of narcotics. Careful, careful, not to leave. I got it, Walter. Just uh, hold still. Well, given the, the high cost of transporting the creature, it must be quite a high. Walter, you are not smoking this thing. Ah, now that should do the trick. Yeah? Now, with some luck, we'll find the active ingredient. Oh, oh my God, Walter! No, 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 wait, wait. Oh, the initial burn was quite something. But... Walter, this thing is feeding on you. This is, this is, this is rather pleasant. What do you think the connection is between an obsessive compulsive germaphobe and our worms? Nice kicks. Thank you. And that's an excellent question. I have a theory. What happened to you? Your father got bitten by that thing, and he refuses to get it checked out. Walter, what if you're infected with one of those worms? I've tested my blood and liver function. I'm fine. In fact, my white cell count is through the roof. I have several new antibodies in my blood, and even the gas I had is gone. And you think it's the worm that did all that to you? A creature, Peter. There's not an illicit narcotic at all. It's medicine. Astrid, the picture. Show Peter, please. Ankylostoma duodenale. An intestinal hookworm, it's about 10 millimeters long. In Chinese medicine, ankylostoma could be used for the treatment of chronic asthma. People are uh, purposefully infected and walk around their entire lives with it. Well, what does that have to do with our parasites? Our parasites are a new species, bioengineered from this hookworm. You mean somebody made these? Designed them to grow in humans. In fact, I don't believe that they could grow anywhere else. I believe it's the parasite's lymph gland that's the real prize. It secretes a remarkable immune-boosting enzyme. Immune-boosting? So you might take that if you had, say, a severe phobia of germs. Or if you wanted to treat any number of immune deficiency disorders. Ankylostoma duodenale, hookworm. Aren't they magnificent? 